and um, we'll look to, uh, well, let's see, I guess we should take roll call first. And everyone's here except for Carl. So I'm not sure where he is. Maybe he'll still come and join us. Is Adam going to be here? Um, he's supposed to be, so um, he might have just got quite up. Sure. Okay. Okay, let's look at the minutes from a month ago and approve those. Make a motion and approve the minutes as written. Yeah, second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. We'll go to old business. There he is. Snuck in the back. <laughs> We were just yeah. talking about you. We're going to show up or not? It was all good. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> they made sure it's correct. <laughs> so under old business, um, let's see, Jennifer, do we want to go to... Um, I don't think we have any old business. We don't have any old business. Yeah. yeah. Yay. Yay! So much better. <laughs> Fresh. Okay. Fresh start. Fresh. Okay, let's look at new business. We have new business. And we want to talk about uh, ethics policy. You want to do that one first or the overtime? You want to do overtime first? We can do overtime. Oh, God, my agenda is out of order, I think. So shall we go to overtime? Do you want to pass that to her? This is the most recent agenda no, that we sent to you guys. That's okay. So I will go out and come back in. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> the overtime resolution discussion. So, <clears throat> um, City Council met, yes. Last Monday. Yep, they last met Monday. last Monday and they approved the resolution as written. Monday um, that just passed. Mm -hmm, and it directed the city staff to make, to come to you all to make recommended language change to the overtime as written in the resolution. And then I did just give you guys this morning the actual current language that's in the um, personnel policy and procedures under overtime. So you should have a copy of that as well. Um, I was just looking because I was thinking that the language that they pulled for the resolution matched this, but I see that it is different. Yeah. Do we have an extra copy so I can follow along? I don't have. I'm sorry. I, I don't have an extra copy. I have an extra copy of the resolution. Yes. So as a recap, the, the intent is to pay overtime on hours work as stated by the FLSA versus on all hours um, and hours worked would include city holidays. So that would not impact your or it would be hard to work 40 hours in a week for some people. Because we had a city holiday that's not really there, so we would include and that's a pretty standard practice when we went out to. Um, research it and we gave all that the background information to the council so. Hours worked would include holiday and then, of course, actual hours worked. And it would no longer include vacation, personal business or sick leave. The, uh, the law itself, as I understand it, does not include the holiday. Correct. It's basically worked hours. Correct. So by adding the holidays, you're really enriching the overtime opportunities for premium pay later on in a in a work week. So 
I believe that, you know, a couple of municipalities I've worked in, this is kind of what we've done. And so I don't see any problem with that. Because like you say, it's nothing to do with what the employee, if, if the city establishes a holiday, then it's their doing, it's not the employees doing. So I think that's that's a wise approach. Thank you. I, I agree with the approach as well. Um, and I know we're going to have to have a hearing on this, so I haven't had a chance to compare. I thought the language in the resolution was the same as you know what was in here, but there's some other things that I see are different. So I have no problem with the concept to move it forward. But I'd have to look at like wording stuff because it's not the same. Is, pardon me, is there new wording other than what's in the policies that is available? Is that what we got? The new wording's in the resolution. It's in the resolution on the back. On the back. Well, that's what you're wanting to put into the policy and procedures. That's what the city council directed us to do. Okay. Yes. Right. So it's the it, yeah, italicized language, right? All right. Thank you very much. OK, so um, because, for instance, I, I believe fire is on a 27 204. This is actually language in the FLSA. No, no. Yeah, no. I mean, that, that what's in there and it, yeah. it is different. Yeah, um, but I, I mean, I agree with the concept of the hours worked with the holiday considered and then. I think, you know, whatever markup we can get before the the hearing I think will be I would be fine with that. Okay. And we we know we have to have a key sure. again. Yeah. And then we can make sure that this one like red line us or whatever. Yeah, so track maybe. changes version. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we can just know that yeah. yep. So I would if it's appropriate, I would make a motion to to move this forward to a public hearing at okay. the next available do we do we want to thank you? Do we want to set a date and then I think we if I'm trying to go back in the memory bank, it's 10 day notice, right? Mm -hmm. we, business day. Yeah. We, we 10, 10 uh, business days. So maybe if it's OK with everybody, let's just go ahead and set that now and, and while, while we're all here. Um, you want us to go ahead and vote on doing that? Please, then, please. Yeah. yeah. So I made a motion to. Well, I'll I'll second it, but my. Yes, the discussion would be appropriate. Is there a need that we have a public hearing? Is there something that, that I'm missing? The lawyers shaking her head that Sorry, we should guys, have yes. a. Is that for us to do? Is that for the city council to do? So um, under the personnel policy, and we kind of went over this under under chapter what was now the new chapter one yeah. is is that any amendments to the policy okay. require a hearing okay. in in front of this board. Okay. So yeah, so we're just right. we'll we'll do that. And I, just to put it in, I think the next regular meeting would be July eighth. Right. Is that? That's, that's only four weeks away. So right. yeah. Is, is there so if we, but if we vote on it, I mean, I don't know if maybe you guys yeah, want to put in a special, you know, like have a meeting on, like presumably it could be on the 24th of June if they got it out on Monday, but I don't, you know, if they want us to move it up because so that it can go to the council, then on, yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be voted on until July 5th because of council, but I mean, that depends on what they want as far as. But I think we should vote to move it. Well, I think if we wanted to move the July meeting to June 24th, that's fine. Right. I don't want to start getting in the habit of having multiple meetings every month. Yeah. No, <laughs> we yeah, we went three years without a meeting. Yeah. So I, I, I think that one one meeting a month is, is sufficient and we can just kick up to, to June if that's what they need. June I think 24th will not work for me. That's right. June 24th will not work for me. I won't be back in town till July the 3rd. So should we vote on the should we vote on what's on the table and then okay. go for I mean vote that we want to do that and then we'll set a date. So you call for the question. Yeah. I'm calling for the question. So there's a motion. There's a motion to move um, this forward to a public hearing. Okay. Seconded. 
Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. He had some discussion and now he's calling the question. So, okay. So, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Now we set a date. Yeah, and, and actually, just concurring with uh, Jennifer here, I think we'd be comfortable just uh, keeping it at the regular, the next regularly scheduled personnel board meeting on July 8th. Okay. Um, yes. Perfect. That seem, seems like it works for your schedule. And, yes. Um, that way we minimize meetings uh, and I think we're okay with that. So. And we'll need to do like a red line version and all that kind of stuff. So that gives us time and we have some vacations and things. Sure. <laughs> so, sure. Yeah, well and deserved. then the 4th of July holiday, so. Yeah, okay. So do we need to make a motion for that or do we just do it at the next? So we don't have to make a motion yeah. for, I think it's just our next meeting date. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll set it in motion. Thank you. Set it in motion, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Not make a motion, set yeah. it in motion. Thank you. Okay. No further discussion on the overtime resolution. Okay. <clears throat> the, the ethics policy discussion. So we don't have the policy yet. Um, this is voluminous, I guess. Just well, there's goes on and on. Things. Yeah. So yeah. few few things. Yeah. There's no there's no draft um, document to to provide here. Um, part of this is if you've been watching some of the city council meetings, um, they're moving towards adopting kind of their own um, ethical ethical policy. Um, and I I'm always cognizant as a staff. We don't want to get ahead of policymakers on what they want to do. So I would rather uh, us wait and see you know what what their what their where their mind is on and view is on on ethical policy from from their perspective and I think that would do a lot to inform what our what the city employee policy would be it'll it'll establish some some expectations so I guess I think we need to wait and see what how that goes and what what if anything gets adopted and then we can move forward with our employee policy um certainly if you all have any so this is kind of a discussion here if you all have any ideas about what you think should be included in that um then this would be a good time i think this is an opportunity for you all to provide that feedback for us so we can start researching whatever whatever you all think but then that will allow the council to have time to develop their own their own policies and they're meeting on the 21st, is that correct? That's correct. Mm -hmm. I mean, not that yeah. maybe that won't finish yeah. up then, but I know they're I think that'll to kick, I think that will kick it off, uh, do yeah. a lot to get us to understand where where they're at yeah. with things, so. Yeah. And we, I mean, we started to put a policy together and it started with, okay, here's like a framework. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, well, whistleblower could be in here and this could be in here. And then it has to be 50 pages long. And it's like, okay, these are already policies. And it's like, what? What do we really want it to be? You know, conflict of interest and mm -hmm. those things certainly. But like mm -hmm. Adam said, we really kind of need to see what the council has in mind so we can follow <coughs> what they're saying. And then we would like to just hear your opinion on, you know, do we want to keep certain policies separate or do we want to put all this stuff in an ethics policy? You know, code of conduct policy, or do we want to just reference like the whistleblower policy that we just did, or uh, workplace violence, or you know, things? Does that make sense? I like the idea of you know, like for instance, since we've already passed now Article One and gotten that through, you know, I'd hate to see us undo it and pull it out and put it over here because I think we made it fit in there. So as far as referencing ones that are out there, I think that's perfectly acceptable to not. You know, rewrite something, and you know, if you can just refer to a section, I mean, that would be perfectly fine with me. Proper referencing is getting it in there one way or another. So, and as far as topics goes, I mean, you know, like you said, conflict of interest. Um, um, you know, I'm sure there's, you know, there's that code of conduct that's in the charter. There'd probably be some language wrapped into that. Um, and I don't like maybe to um, 
I'm thinking off the top of my head and I don't remember like categories anymore, but things to do with social media, maybe like a what you even don't do and that kind of thing. So we do have a social media policy and okay. we also have like technology policies okay. that dictate. So, you know, that are in the personnel policies and procedures or um, or no, like more because standard because they're policies. more modern. <laughs> right, right, right. Absolutely. They're more modern. I think in 2013, we weren't worrying about what people yeah. were posting as much on. And I do think some of those need to be in the personnel policy. Where they need to be, is that is that an ethics? Is that an ethics policy? Or is that more of a you know its own yeah social media policy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an administrative policy right now. Right. But I, I would agree with you. I think it's something that should be in a, the, per, you know, the, mm -hmm. here's your personnel policies and yeah. procedures. You know, you sign, you receive this. This is, yeah. you know. Unless, you know, for social media, because it does change. Yeah. It does change. Um, maybe it's mentioned in an ethics policy that we would adhere to mm -hmm. the city's administrative social media policy so we can change it when it when we need to when new technologies come out or new new methods of communication yeah, or new <laughs> political you know things or because if that happens you know right now our public information officer can make those changes as needed um, so maybe that's something that we reference that you agree to adhere to our social media policy and then like reference it, right? but not actually have the policy in there. What do you think about that? I, I, have, I mean, I mean, I mean this I, is yeah. on every call. Seriously, Laura, yeah, I was I, like, here yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I, I go two ways on it. Um, you know, like we talked about like the, uh, whistleblower that's already in the so we're referencing within the same document and then of course this is referencing an outside document that when I think about like if I onboarded somebody and you know here's where you can see your policies and procedures oh and you need to know the social media policy so here's that and you need to know the xyz policy you know like I don't know and I don't know too um because of course, if it were online, you could be like, you know, click here for the policy. It know, is online. Line. They're all yeah. online. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then have a clickable for yeah. them, you know. Because technology again has changed. Yeah. You know, I'm mm -hmm. assuming you're not printing out the whole thing and handing it to mm -hmm. them. Yeah, and we certainly yeah. don't need to make that decision now. But these yeah. are like these are the things that we have. Correct. That's why one of, one of the reasons why there isn't a, a draft policy yet because. It got to be like literally 50 pages long, and it's like, no, this, this is too much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, 50 pages of any policy. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Nobody's gonna read that or yeah, comply with it. And if you had to make one change to any one of those sections, then you got to come back to us and do this. Yeah, and it's that. okay. I don't. I don't know. So, um, let's wait until. I mean, I would ask that we wait until after the 21st mm -hmm. to help inform us kind of you know the mm -hmm. direction of the council and then we can start thinking about how we want it to be laid out that would be mm -hmm. what we would prefer i'll make a motion to table the item until the yeah. next regularly scheduled meeting i second it one one thing i want to make sure that maybe gets included and i don't know that it's ever been a problem with the city I suspect it might have been, I don't know, is what the obligation of employees when they are offered something of value by a potential vendor, yep. uh, if, if that exists in administrative policy or personnel policy, I don't think it does. What if somebody says at Christmas time, we're going to give you a little gift of some nature, or we're going to bring you a couple of bottles of wine, or you're going to go out to a fancy restaurant. Uh, now, some places have said, well, that's okay as long as it doesn't exceed the value of $50, for example. 
And others said, you don't accept anything at all. Uh, you don't accept a cup of coffee. If, if you're in the process of bidding life insurance, and I was there once mm -hmm. where we went out bids and we had a potential life insurance for 1,500 employees. And there was nothing intended by it, but somebody said, well, come on, let's go out to lunch and we'll have this at this fancy restaurant. And I went, but I sent them a check mm. to cover meal. what I spent or what, what I ate. Mm -hmm. and, and I just think that, you know, there is no free lunch in this world. And, and, and you know, people are doing things to try to influence your vote, or to influence a, pers a perspective, maybe a building inspection, you, you, you name it. So I think we need to be clear what's acceptable. What's acceptable for a city employee, an administrative employee, whoever it is, to accept by an outside vendor who, who wants to do business with the city. And I recommend accepting nothing, but you may want to say it shall be no more than mm -hmm. 10 bucks. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do on the, what do you do on the, on, on the week before Christmas? Somebody comes in and they bring in Topsy's popcorn. That's about 40 bucks a can. I mean, you know, if you price pop or they bring in anything, Russell Stover's candy or a bottle of wine or a small appliance. What obligation does a city employee have to say no? I can't accept that. And the reason why is that it's a policy of the city that I cannot accept a gift. You know, it's not my fault. Otherwise, I might. I'm not being. I'm not being uh, uh, disrespectful to you. But I. But the policy is what it is. Mm -hmm. So, so I'd like to see that included somewhere. That is one of the topics that we have in there. Yeah, we do. Yeah, I would think that would apply to the city council as well, but that's yes, that's and that's fine. one that's of those fine. things that we want to see what yeah. that we would want to see what what their, their thoughts are from that. Yeah, 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 being well. influenced and stuff. So yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I but would that's that's, like a, that's just one example. Would have like a yearly review of the policy and for you know of the ethics training because. You know, coming from an employee that employer that, you know, we're, we had 2,500 employees. We had 35 years of every year doing ethics training because mm. it changes every year. So, so that's what I would suggest is that they do an annual training and review mm -hmm. and signing of it because oh. you can you can hand an employee procedures, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that that's they'll sit down idea. and write it you know and read it but by them having a sign mm -hmm. yes i read this policy and i understand it yeah. then they're signing that yes they've read it and that holds them accountable yeah. for their yeah. actions i like that there you go. There's a, there's, in the fire station you'll have people bring pies cakes, you know, uh, and I, I'm just asking that there, you might, there might be some leeway for, for that because the, the guys are not, they're not asking for better fire service for a vote, but you have, I think there's some consideration for that. We, well, one of my firemen saved a guy's life, truly saved his life. That guy come back and give us a uh, Italian sausage spaghetti for about six months. <laughs> and it wasn't to get us to help him. It was a real appreciation. We have a lot of yeah, the pizza shop will bring in their extra yeah. pizzas. I mean, so that yeah. I'm wondering if you'll weigh that in so, somehow. But well, I, I think I think that's a legitimate, Harry, because I, I know we had a fire at my house. My parents were appreciative of the Independence Fire Department, and they did the very same thing. They brought in some yeah. food items for the firemen and. Maybe you could we, that could be spelled out that it wasn't a gift. Of, we wanted somebody's business, but it was a show of appreciation for right. for right. services above and beyond. And, and you might have a cap, like it can't be three thousand dollars. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it might, you know, because you know I'm saying I don't know what the cap would be, but I don't. I'm trying to. I'm. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think right now the council gets free tickets to the event center, and some free suite for either the mayor or the council. So I wonder how, and that's that's either a double breasting of the city of Independence or it's a private corporation. And I think, and I do remember a guy getting golf tickets in the Fire and Light 30 years ago when they were getting golf tickets. So there's a, it seemed like whatever's good for the legislators should apply to the worker bees. It shouldn't be kind of, off, it should be equal or at least somewhere equal. Yeah. But it, you, know, you know, sometimes it just, it, 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 uh, what you'd say is I, I know at a, an employer that I worked at, everybody sort of, they said, well, so-and-so is getting Kansas City Chiefs football tickets and a free parking pass and free food in the club section. Everybody, the employees said, that's not right. That's not right that that happens, but nobody was in a position of question it. And, uh, and I never know. I never knew whether that happened or not. Somebody above me in the organization. That was the rumor, and it was, it was a negative rumor. And everybody, you know, everybody held that up as well. They're not abiding by good policy. And I'm I, thinking I, the same standard is what I'm. I'm hoping for. I don't have any yeah, real same standards. Effect on. I would think for the elected people as well as the employees. Yeah. Because after all, the the city council gets a paycheck, their employees as well. I, mean, I, I think the elected we officials don't get a are probably getting here. something tighter than what we have, if anything. Would you agree? I don't think they'll match. No. Uh, um, yeah. I, I think, think they talk about the city council and him yeah. Him. I mean, <laughs> they, you know, the city council is going to. I mean, there's a there's a whole charter section. You know, a section of the charter on city council and code of conduct. Um, so no, I don't think they match. Um, I, you know, there's a difference. Um, but again, I think it's important to see where they're headed with things and then that will, that will help us understand where we need to go. Right. Yep. So, there's, there's a difference between yeah. customer appreciation yeah. and vendor. Yeah. Solicitation. Yeah. Solicitation yeah. or yeah. influencing, yeah. Yeah. trying yes. to influence yeah. 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 Or, there's a decision yeah. vote yeah. Yeah. or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, okay. homemade pie is not. Right. Or even spaghetti dinners or yeah, whatever. That's, or that's, yeah. that's, there's a different. That's not what you're trying but, 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 you know, I think that it spells that, like Henry said. I mean, you know, gifts of appreciation for a job well done right. where maybe they didn't have to do it, yeah. I think is a whole different kind of deal myself. Right. It, it it is. I, I don't disagree with that. I mean, there there's an important. Um, I mean, we want the community to be able to show to provide yes. that appreciation, absolutely, um, and build that relationship and mm -hmm. and, and goodwill. I mean, yeah, so. I do it. Like mm -hmm. the IT guy that comes and does this mm -hmm. all the time. I brought him a bundle of his favorite candy bars this morning with a little note, just saying, "I pre we really appreciate all the work right. you do mm -hmm. for us." Mm -hmm. And those are good that, things in life. And that, that's okay. Take if if citizens want to do that, I think we should. We shouldn't. Mm -hmm. to, to, that's to, their yeah. way to. Yeah. Well, and I think one other kind of an offshoot of that is maybe at some holiday time, Christmas or whatever, that employees should not go out and solicit businesses to kick in a prize to be awarded to city employees or to anybody and that sometimes happens as well where you where you really put a merchant on the spot well you got to give a mexican dinner or you got to give a roasted chicken or you got to give free membership in an athletic club no favors over and above what you know yeah. all we're saying is everybody needs to be treated alike and you know we don't want to solicit businesses for gifts for anybody you know? yeah that's good so i call the question hmm? i'm calling the question <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm good talk. no 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 i think i just waited and he made good talks yeah yeah i just didn't know if anybody else had anything to say otherwise mm -hmm. we do have a motion on the table to uh 
postpone a draft or further discussion until the next regularly scheduled meeting. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and second. Second. Yeah. we've had discussion. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's why I'm calling. So call the question. Yeah. Right. So all in favor of that motion? Aye. 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 Okay. Two down. Okay. okay, so then next on our agenda is a review or a first review can discussion of draft rules bylaws personnel board um i'll just mention that and i sent this to you as i was in my office to come up here i converted the pdf to a word document to do some redlining because i think you know i have a lot of points and it's, i think it's easier to see it like in this format, then go down to paragraph three and sentence over here and all that. So that's what I did. And I can discuss, you know, the points that I have here okay. if you'd like, or somebody else wants to go first. So I'll you see. were sent the PUAB, like what their rules are mm -hmm. as a reference. Yes. We talked about that. Yep. And then just a draft that we put together, just with some thoughts. Yeah. And there was lots of highlights and obviously blanks. Yeah. And then um, you have what Laura just said, her thoughts yes. and comments. Um, but just for follow through, yeah, yeah. just to, to follow yeah. as she's going through it. Good. Okay. Uh, the first one just there is putting an A, an A uh, in front of personnel board. I think that's pretty obvious. Um, and then also in that first paragraph, I just said, let's define charter so we don't say charter the city of Independence, Missouri 15 times in the document. I think that's pretty standard stuff. Okay. Um, Number two, um, I added the part that was in the uh, in the PUAB referring to uh, otherwise shall vacate the position pursuant to that uh, article point zero zero two of the City Code of Independence. Yep. That just makes it equal mm -hmm. to that. Um, consider the position. Um, so the first part of paragraph three there it says if a member misses three consecutive this is kind of where i think we have we're gonna have to discuss the meeting thing in general if we want to say that we're having monthly meetings um or three consecutive meetings i, I, I didn't know i think that's something we need to think about but it's also addressed in other areas about you know under the meetings and stuff like that so maybe we could just circle it and come back to that Does that be good Does that be good guys okay so let's circle that and come back to that um on the third line there uh just uh, that changing it from article 29 to 39 um and then again i believe I don't think this is not is not in the PUAB, but I went ahead and added um, that part that is also in uh, 003 part two. Um, and I just basically copied it over. So, you know, said resignation shall be deemed effective immediately upon said person reaching the milestone, not require any action by the city to accept the resignation unless the council is given prior approval for an exception because of unusual circumstances. I just think we want to make sure that that is very upfront um, on that. Uh, number four, I took some language from the PUAB and then I, so I wrote out the board shall elect by a majority of vote a chair and vice chair for two year terms. They have one. I said two. I don't think we talk about it. Officer elections will be held annually. And then here we go again at the you know, what meeting are we talking about? The vacancy of the chair or vice chair occurs during the year. The board can fill such a majority vote at the next that will serve until the next meeting issue again. So I don't know if maybe there, that's some discussion probably that we might want to have on that paragraph. I picked two years out of. I think one year is. I mean, if we meet every month, one year is one thing, but if we don't meet every month, then a one year term is like uh, I haven't even gotten up to speed. You know, yeah, I like the two year, and I I don't know that we need a vice chair. 
I actually think we do because we've had, you know, like certain several instances, not several, like, but, you know, like where you've had to be out or, you know, and then I think we should have a vice chair, just like the council has a mayor pro tem, you know, so that, you know, if you say, hey, I, I'm not going to be able to facilitate that meeting, then those duties fall to the vice chair. I, I, I agree with what you say, Laura. I mean, I think, you know, there's no That's reason standard. not to have. Right. That's pretty standard. Somebody that officially designated, you know. Okay. It could, because, because, because if the chair, whether it be Teresa or whoever, uh, is out in a hospital, maybe the last thing she wants to think about is who's going to chair that meeting. And maybe we have somebody. Yeah. Call 911 and then call and get the chair replaced. Yeah, call, call the police department, go and get yeah. an affidavit. On it. I think it's, it's very standard for like virtually any group. They have a chair and a vice chair. And then the part about, you know, when we vote on it is, is the question. Um, um, Maybe we just say elections shall be held annually. So like, say we put this all in place, you know, go through this, we approve this. We say, okay, now we need to vote on a chair and a vice chair, and they're going to start on September 1st, 2022, whatever. Then obviously when their term is coming up, then, well, so we would say biannually because it would be like every other, yeah. And not say what meeting, just that if this all gets going in September, it's too, you know, it'll be it'll be August of the oh, next, you know, yeah. for September. Is that good? So officer elections shall be held by Bye, annually. Uh, and then cross the rest of that out. So officers elections will, shall be held by annually, period. If a vacancy of the chair or vice chair occurs during the year, the board may fill such vacancies by a majority vote to serve until the end of the vacated term, whatever phrase that, however that's yes phrased. I could have taken that from the count, the Yep. You know what I'm saying. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on. More special. Um, on five, I put in here, switch this section with the previous one. I just didn't, I didn't want to have a bunch of comments out to the side, makes it all go up. It just seems like we should go with they if they resign their position and then then have the paragraph about it if a vacancy. You know, just those switch four and so five. So go three and then five becomes four and four becomes five, maybe? Uh, just just four and five switch. Okay. Basically. Gotcha. And that's again, that's whatever, but it just seems flowing, yeah. you know, wise. Um, okay. Nothing else on paragraph five, nothing on six. Um, on seven, um, and, I, and I see what you did where you took it from the charter language. Um, I thought that it would be and similar to the PUAB where it just says the powers and duties of the board shall be in accordance with section 3.29 of the charter period. And then if the charter gets changed, we don't have to come and change this because the charter gets changed. And then you just take out all those okay. things. I love it. And then it shortens it up a little bit. Too. <laughs> um, okay, so then that takes us to page three because. Okay. Uh, Do you want to do you want to complete it all or can we interject uh, as we I interject? Well, you can interject. Yeah. Interject? Sure. yeah, interject. Well, I'm looking on page two of four and I don't quite understand something. It says here any officer employee or are you you know where I'm going? No, I, I'm not sure. Am, am I reading off here the, appeals of all non probationary um, or reviewing Laura's document? I think you're oh, looking she has Something else that I'm not looking at. Okay. Oh, do you have a She's. Um, I only thought I gave it to you. Let's see. I'm, yes. I'm here. I'm doing this. That was, yeah, that's yeah. the draft. Those are Laura's notes that she's reviewing with us. Okay. I just made a copy of it for, so we could follow along. And then what is this for? That's, that's what, what I originally sent. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, right. and so those are Laura's notes. Then she just sent it this morning. Yeah. So oh, okay. I spent yeah. she was. We're on that. All right. So that's I thought it would help to be like because I know when you're talking about what paragraph and where and everything. So, so now look at page two of Laura's. Okay. Tell us what the paragraph it is. Yeah, so Laura is, is suggesting that on that number seven that you were just looking at to take all of that language out and just say um, the powers and duties no. of the board shall be in accordance with section 3.29 of the charter because that is actually, I copied and pasted it from the charter. And that's a good point because they are looking probably going to look at the charter. Right. So right. Right. that way, if the charter changes, okay. we don't have to keep going back and forth. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so and then the formatting that, just got kind of weird, but it, yeah. yeah, because when I converted it, from, and yeah. I'm like, you know what, I'm not going to yeah. play around with formatting. <laughs> I just like it was, it was, it's ugly because they're putting all these spaces in and stuff. But so, oh, yeah. go ahead. Okay. Oh, okay. All of this now. Okay, right. so now go to page three, number eight, because all the rest of that seven is yep. gone. Um, I changed. I just took out the city manager, and that just to say the board shall have the right. Um, I mean, that's the city manager. I mean, the city manager does have that right. We're not negating that right, but we're watching. We're writing personnel board procedures. So what he gets to see, I mean, he still gets to see it. It's just, I don't know that it. He was taken from the, exactly from the yeah, charter. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's exactly the language. So. Yeah. I mean, if you want to leave it in, that's fine. But, you know, to me, this is what the board does. If Zach had a policy of his own, he would say, I can do that, you know, whatever. Okay. I mean, yeah, and it's and in the end, it's not like a big, it's not a big deal. But um, and then where I crossed up again, the city of Manhattan is just because we'll define charter one time. Um, I removed section nine because it talks about meetings, and we have a whole section on meetings. So I just said, let's just get rid of that because it's covered below. Um, what is now number nine? Let's see, um, I added so. The liaison shall send out all meeting and public hearing notices, agendas and supporting documentation, send notices to the council, to the board, attend all meetings, blah, 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 keep the minutes of the board. Um, so I just wanted to make sure because, um, and you'll see what I think we need to keep that public hearings section kind of like PUAB has, obviously not same wording. So that's why I'm referencing meetings and hearings. Okay. Um, and then I said, this is kind of like what we had, Kind of talked about for from you guys to us meeting agendas and all supporting documentation shall be emailed to the board no later than i said three because we're doing tuesday um but if we it would be helpful if it was tuesday morning i understand i think i understand i think you need the time it just depends on how much it is you know like if you do a 50 page ethics document i'm never going to be able to yeah. even a 10 page you know what i mean so but if we say at least three or no later than three days before um, before meeting date or at the same time, such items are emailed to the employees of the city if sooner. Because uh, I, I have had employees say, well, we've got something and we're like, I don't know that yet. Yeah. So you send something to them if you could send it to us as well. Um, real, real quick, I'm sorry. You uh -huh. said you uh, are emailed to the employees. Do we email them to all the employees? No, not just regular stuff. I just want to make sure that we're clarifying. Do we have? I mean, right. we make it, all this it, stuff public, but we like we didn't email like this stuff to the employees. Well, like like, like say when there's a um, when like there's a, a public, public hearing. hearing, a public hearing, yes, yes, and that's ten days, and it all gets. In, right. But we don't just email regular discussion stuff. So you just place. send them the agenda? Yes, that it's posted and um, right, right. Post, yeah, that, that posted. Yeah. And then they, they just get an email with the agenda. No, we don't no. email that to the employees. We're not oh, okay. required to. Right. Not for a regular okay. discussion okay. meeting. Yeah, no, that, that's fine. I did. I just, yeah. I just didn't want to make sure. Yeah, I, did, I didn't know. <laughs> we didn't talk. I didn't, that's not, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. I, Here, I mean, we can take some changes. Yes. That all gets changed. Yeah. That all gets so like the next meeting, all of that for the overtime rules and everything, all that will be sent 10 days to all employees, to you guys. Okay. Public yeah. posted, all of that. Okay. So and then so like we can take out the for a meeting date period. 
and then we don't need or at the same time, blah, 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 the rest of that sentence. So then, because the last sentence says public hearing agenda is an all supporting document should be emailed to the board no later than 10 days before the date of the public hearing, which is and what you're going to do. Anyway. And you can put in there and to the board and all employees. And I think that the reason I think that I didn't put that in there is because I think we have that. Well, because I know why, because I then added back the section on public hearing, but does it? No, let's just go ahead and edit it there. I agree. Okay. The board and all employees. Yep. Yep, that makes sense. It makes sense to everybody else. Um, yep. Paragraph 10 is fine with me. Um, so Article 2 under meetings, regular meetings shall be held on the second Friday of every month. Now I know it says or on another date and time selected. Um, and I changed your title up. Okay. <laughs> we voted on that. I want you to have your title there. Okay. <laughs> um, or their respective designees. So um, I just that second Friday of every month. I don't. I get that we have an out because then we can say or any other. Do we want to say regular meetings shall be held monthly at a date? date to be set by or I don't know I just would I don't want us awesome. to lock into something right. like PUAB has been doing this third Tuesday or second Tuesday whatever it is for ever you know um, and I don't know and you know too like like one month we didn't have a meeting because it's like we need a break and we don't have something to present so maybe something language of meets monthly on dates to be agreed upon, you know, whatever. Um, unless something to the effect of unless the meeting's canceled because there's no new business or no business to discuss. So that somebody doesn't say, hey, this says that you're supposed to meet monthly. And it's like, yeah, but if we want to cancel a meeting because we don't have something. Well, I will say it's helpful for us, the staff, to know when a regular meeting is. No, I don't disagree with that. I mean, if, I just don't know to about say it's at a date decided that is not helpful. I mean, like right now we have this room and everything reserved mm -hmm. for the second Friday through the end of the year. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. and if we don't okay. need it, we'll can we cancel it. Mm -hmm. But and that's know. where maybe uh, that's where we need the, the phrase is uh, regular meetings shall be. And you just say, well, it says every month. So but then add. Uh, I'm good with the second Friday of every month, and then to say unless inclement weather or pandemic, because we don't know what the future holds with this stuff. <laughs> well, and, and I think those are all like emergency type, you know, situations. But more to the effect of, you know, I think was it December we decided we, we didn't want to do January, or we didn't do December, just like unless meeting is canceled. How about just saying the second Friday of the month? Or, and then not of every month. Oh, way. okay. Yeah. The month. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm with you. Well, that's perfect. Well, I I, I think it all. The, the second Friday is working out really great. Uh huh. I, I'm sure the city doesn't have so many meetings toward Fridays, mm -hmm. like city council and planning commission and mm -hmm. all the other things. And this location is great. It's, mm -hmm. it's handicap handicap accessible, easy parking right in the front. Got plenty of room for employees to come. So we need to meet here since we got a nice room. City Hall is not so nice. I <laughs> I like City that's, Hall. A, that's a whole other <laughs> issue. And, uh, you know, and Friday works out good for everybody, and everybody knows that that's the day we meet. So, and then, you know, if as people transition or schedules change, you can always, once these are adopted, you can always amend them. It's not a, mm -hmm. Right, because you don't have to go to the council. It's not a significant undertaking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are your rules. Right. So very good. Something doesn't work, you change it. No big deal. Perfect. I like that. I like that. I like the, the instead of actually. <laughs> it lasted long. <laughs> and that in that <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> Happy hour. Happy hour. <laughs> How did we get to that? <laughs> That's in the bylaws. You didn't see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's when we get to getting the bylaws done. Then we could go to happy hour. <laughs> okay, I like that change. Okay. 
Um, and then the second page, I don't know if we need to say meeting notice, but I said the date time play and I, I guess I did go and look and the tentative language is used like when you guys email out the agendas. You know, like on the Thursday four, it says the tentative agenda is and then can be finalized. So I'm I'm OK with leaving that word tentative in there. Um, so. Death that, you know what I mean? OK, yeah. Um, so the time, date, place, and tentative agenda of each meeting shall be provided by the chief human resources, office, resources officer or their designate to the city clerk for posting at least 24 hours exclusive of, you know, just like what it's, you know, as it's supposed to be. Yeah. That makes sense to everybody? Yeah. Okay. Next page. Um, you guys had highlighted. Um, Um, you guys had highlighted number five, and I didn't know what your thoughts were on that. I'm fine with it, but I didn't know what your thoughts were on it. Or maybe it just got highlighted for. It's probably just to make sure that's what um, you guys are okay you with. All are comfortable with. You know, I, we've kind of shifted gears on expectations um, with with different administration now. Mm -hmm. uh, so before. It was a different expectation. Now it's a different expectation. So it's really up to you as a board to decide, you know, how you want to do that. I mean, if there are some some days where, hey, we're just going to do this via Zoom or Teams, this this enables you to do that. Um, or if you know one person wants to call in mm -hmm. uh, to keep a quorum going, this enables that. I think we just highlighted that to make sure, yeah, you know, you wanted to, that was what you wanted. I think it's great because it gives us all the options and if we don't ever use all the options and whatever, but if we do. Yeah. Okay, I'm good with it. Yeah, mm -hmm. Hopefully we never encounter what we've had encountered, but uh, you know, this would yeah. enable. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that, uh, we have the thing. owl yeah. now, yeah. we have we have yeah. teams yeah. and we, you know, yeah, but let's just let's just not do all that again. <laughs> Can we write that in plus yeah, happy be, hour? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no more pandemics plus happy hour. There you go, there you go. Um, number write it down more. <laughs> <laughs> the, the person help board suggested. Um, number six, I said um, the chair shall preside at all meetings and public hearings of the board. In the absence of the chair, the vice chair shall preside. In the absence of both vice and chair and vice and acting will be selected by the members present. And then I just said the presider has the right to vote on all matters. So whoever the presider is by the time you get through three sentences mm -hmm. can vote. And that's the language again that copies basically PAB. Okay. Um, I didn't understand what eight meant. The chair shall report at any meetings on any official transaction taking place that has not come to the attention of the board. I don't know really what that meant. I don't know. That's probably took it from somebody else's. Oh, it, and it is right out of PUAB, yeah. Yeah. which I'm like, well, maybe there's something that happens over there. I mean, what? transactions do we we don't I don't know what transaction yeah. mean are we talking about like a dollar transaction are we talking about that that may have been something very specific that the the board the PUAB yeah uh decided to do um you know quite quite honestly I mean if we if there's something that you all should have heard about and and we you know that's that's our responsibility right. and if we don't do that we should yeah. Calls out on that. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys do. You know what I mean? And yeah, yeah you yeah, do. So, and yeah, I don't know. So. And I just didn't know what it's a transaction and nobody. So I would suggest taking out eight because I don't yeah. I don't, yeah. Yeah, let's I don't even that. understand. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the number nine in the absence is a quorum. The meeting presider, like I said, because we've we've already decided, you know, above uh, shall announce, blah blah blah. The rest of that paragraph on good list. And then if I should move forward. I added Article 3 back, so some similar language from PUAB because we have public hearings too. Um, so the board shall conduct public hearings as set forth in Article 1, Section B of the Personnel Policies and Procedures. Uh, when a public hearing is called, that is considerable if there is find a time and place, yada, yada. Okay, notice of public hearing shall be given in accordance with Article 1, Section B of the same. I could have said of the same, I guess. But and then the order of the hearing shall be opening of the hearing. 
reports from staff and board, person speaking in favor, opposition, and then closing the hearing. That good. Mm -hmm. No, I like it. Okay. Okay. Um, under agenda, uh, the staff liaison should prepare. See, some of this seems like it gets is a little redundant, but then I was like, whatever. The staff liaison designee shall prepare a draft agenda for each regular and special meeting and public hearings of the board. Regular and special meetings for each. Meetings or meeting, I don't know, I'm not following my, not doing my grammar right there, but whatever. Yeah, you, you know okay. what I'm saying. Yep. Yeah. Um, Jenna shall be prepared. So, Chief Human Resources Officer, respective designees. The final agenda should be approved by the chair or their respective designee and should be posted in accordance with Article 2. So, done. We good. Um, any member of the board may make a request to the chair. I, we don't, see, I don't think we need to say board chair there to mm -hmm. place an item items on the agenda provided the request is made. I say I say 48 hours in advance of the meeting date. And the reason I say that is because I know that you would have to have. I mean, yes, it grants us also the ability to amend it, you know, to do something if we don't. But if we had something that we know we wanted to add, if you guys had it 48 hours in advance so you could fix the agenda item online 24 hours in advance. I thought that would be oh, helpful. Um, so 24 hours in advance of the meeting date. And probably we're meeting on Fridays mostly, but um, we could say two business days. Because I don't, you know, I don't think it, we shouldn't give it to you on Saturday and expect it to, like we had a Monday meeting. So should we say two business days? Yeah, do that. that. Yeah, and then you don't have to get it because then we know what business day is and. Holidays, yeah. blah, blah, blah. So, business, business days. Oh, the meeting date. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then number three is just something again that was in uh, here that, in PUAB. When electronic presentations or reports are to be used for discussion, uh, the presentations should be provided to the board members and public by posting to this, on the city website 24 hours in advance of the meeting date, or should they? We are to be presented. I don't know on that one. Like if you guys were going to come and give us a PowerPoint presentation on how to write an ethics policy, I mean, I mean, we don't do those things, so maybe that's not necessary. I think it's kind of redundant. Because we say supporting documentation with the agenda that comes out to us. And if that's a PowerPoint, well, then that's what it is. So maybe just. I'm good if three's gone. I changed yeah. my mind. <laughs> yeah, I it's I of, don't ever foresee doing an electronic. I mean, no, and it's especially with this. If you know, it's a small group. Yeah, I and mean, we have we the have ability like, to. Yeah, I mean, you could. It, we wanted it, you could send the PowerPoint ahead email. Absolutely. You know, this isn't like, okay. There were I three. would consider that supporting documentation. Yeah. 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 So forget about three. Change yeah. my mind. <laughs> um, the number one on under ordinance uh, order of business, I'm not sure what section one, two, and three was referring to. I thought that it maybe should just say board meetings shall be devoted to the discussion of, of items. And other relevant matters in accordance with city charter section 3.29. I don't know. Yeah, I tried. I tried to <laughs> find that section. I'm like, I don't know where any of that section's at. So basically, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh -huh. She'll be in blah blah blah. Okay. Uh, number two. Um, maybe some. We might want to have some discussion here about this. So, call to order, roll call, and then I put city comment, citizen comment. I did that kind of like what the council does. You know, they call their meeting to order and blah, 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 and then citizen comments then um, before we move into our business, which is approval of minutes, new and old. I don't know if, how people feel about that. I know there's times we have people join in on, com you know, and if it's a public hearing, obviously everybody can speak. So that's, this is just so. a general meeting. I'm going off of memory. Um, where's the where's the PUAB? 
um, bylaws. So they have a process if someone wants to sign up and speak. Um, yeah, and that's in the next paragraph. Okay, it is. Um, yeah, that's a that that next paragraph is the signing up to speak. Okay. But so so let's think that in conjunction, you know, in order to speak at a meeting, individuals must make a request to the staff liaison. I said before the meeting, at which he or she wishes to speak. Again, thinking of the council, I can walk in, at, you know, right before the council meeting starts, I can sign up to speak. That's where I picked that from. Yeah, but um, I mean, it's really your your choice. The um, PUAB rules seem to serve that group well. Yeah. And then, going to those for several years now. Um, it's a good process. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no surprises there. Um, and that's it sets a good tone. So if, um, I, I guess I would suggest maybe following more of what the PUAB does in that regard than um, what the city council does. I think that's a different forum. Uh, yeah. If this is more specific. In terms of giving them, so doing, so, so we're doing. I'm sorry. Say that again. Sure. Um, so, so speakers, doing what the PUAB does. Yeah, and, and, that, and that there's a process there. Um, and so, um, so where do they put? Where do they put citizen comments? They actually, the PUAB puts it at the at end. the end. Yeah. Um, I, oh, I didn't see it on there at all. I think they have to do it seven oh, so days in advance. Four. Yeah. There um, you go. Okay. The, the Friday before the Friday say. before the meeting, so they meet on a Tuesday. Um, yeah, the Friday before is definitely not going to work because the agenda wouldn't even come out until yeah. Tuesday. So that part definitely doesn't work. Maybe, maybe a two business day. Or two, I yeah. don't know. I think there needs to be some time standard there as opposed to showing up at the meeting. Um, I think two business days similar to the agenda. If it wants to be. If there's a desire to amend the agenda. There's two business days there. This is yeah. the same thing. Two business days. So and then the chair can always like if we want comment. You know, if we request comment or they have comment here, then you can guide how that. Yep. That OK, so we want to keep the citizens comments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, like, get, I, like, I, I like them in the beginning yeah, because that's, that's I perfectly yeah, fine. That's because um, I talked to the yeah. I talked to the council before about how. You know, you can only talk at certain times. Well, when we can only talk at the end, it's like, so well, the, now you've already voted on it, so I didn't get to, you know. Yeah, the work yeah. is already. Mm, like, yeah. Maybe maybe already done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, maybe. okay, well, I had something to say about that, but that's yeah. okay. It's, you know. Yeah, I think I was most. Uh, You're more concerned with, with the giving time. Time ahead. to know it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I would agree. Two two business days instead mm -hmm. of saying 48 yeah. hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. So okay, so back up to we have A B C. Approval minutes, old business, new business, and then um, I think we should. I think we should add this section. It's it's what it's it's pared down. This is what we use at the Kansas City Public Library Board of Trustees. But um, you know, like Becky's added to um, the agendas for the council that basically we can consider going into executive session at any time. So just putting it on there. So, like I said, this is the phrasing we have on all of our agendas at the library. Consideration of a motion to convene in closed session under revised statute, blah, 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 to discuss. Now, we're not going to talk about real estate, obviously, but legal and personnel issues. And we can take out real estate if you want to take that out. But I think it's something that we should. Then we consider it and then we say, nope, we don't have anything to do with that, you know, but it's there if we want to. And I and I take that one from my experience and the other, but then also Becky getting that training, you know, and them suggesting that that be on agendas. So let me ask. So each agenda, what you're thinking in your, what you're thinking is each agenda, it would have all of these items listed just like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then if you get down to the closed session um, matter. At that point, it would be either we have something for closed session or we don't. Right, right. And and I'm I, I'm thinking of this situation like, um, <clears throat> say we have a personnel person, you know, just one person who has a complaint and we're, you know, they've been let go or something and they have, you know, that type of thing. Well, we're dealing with one matter, yeah. you know, um, where I think again we should call to order. We should roll call. Um, if you want to take citizen, you know, if you want to approve minutes, 
and we could take it out of order if we want to say, you know, take the take the agenda out of order. We want to go ahead and and have the executive session, but we need to be in open session to go to executive session and then come back out of it. Mm -hmm. And I think just having that there covers it if we do. Or we could only have that phrase when we know we're going to be discussing an item that falls under that. So you know you're bringing an employee who has an issue. So you'll say, uh, board will go into closed session to discuss personnel issues. So maybe it's not on there every time. Um, right, no, I'll, I'll just, I know, I know auditors hate to have the closed session noticed up on, on agendas if you're not gonna go into closed session. I mean, I fight with the auditors all the time about that yeah, because I have cities that meet once a month and it's like, well, what happens if something comes up right. the day before your meeting and we need to we need to go into closed session. So I I'm I'm fine with having it on there. Um I guess at the top we say the order of business shall be, and I understand there's a generally, but I don't want someone to come back and say, well, wait a minute here. It says this is exactly how your agenda is right. gonna go, and you do or don't have that on yeah. there. And so uh, Maybe, maybe we just have it on there then. Just do it. So either we notice it each time or we can maybe put it, you know, behind G, we could just say if applicable or something to qualify yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, that's where I just say, you know, consideration right. of a motion. I mean, is there any reason we should go into closed session? Nope, we considered it, moved on. And that's what we, I mean, that's yeah. what we do. I mean, like yeah, said, at the yeah. Library. I think legally, I think you could, you could do just that. Yeah, so, and if, you know, if it's, if it's a no, it's no. Right. You know, just like if we, for some reason, didn't have the minutes, for us, we right. would say we don't have any minutes to approve. So, you know, we're right. going to table that item until the next one. Right, right. And I probably would add to, um, obviously, real estate would not be something that's yeah, board to consider, go. but legal personnel. And then um, uh, we've got the number 13, which is the records. Personnel records. Anyway, well, 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 this is the but, this is the statute that 610 lays out that it can only be for those three reasons. No, no, no. I, I, yeah. I totally understand. I know yeah. all the exceptions. It's yeah. just it's not listed here. So I want to make sure that OK, um, I would clean that up. That's all I'm saying yeah. is, is that when it comes back to you. I'll yeah, clean it up. and I, yeah, and and the paragraph that is on the council's agenda goes into there's another something other than the statute, you know what I mean? This, 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 and it's a big paragraph. Right. I just pared it down to this. But oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. perfect. No, yeah. no, this, this gets you to where, but we would have to, it's not only 610021, but we need to also identify which subsection. So I, again, okay. I would love You to, are going to make it. Yeah, you'll do the word. Let me this, and then. You're the wordsmith on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me finesse. Very good. Okay. I just think that's something that is important. Okay. Okay, um, and then like, the, uh, the, all the highlighting there is I didn't do so. Um, I have nothing else in that pair on that article, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, and so then, of course, the articles we number because I added that one. The record one, I didn't have a problem with that. Amendments, um, three members, special notice. I know I don't think I think I think that was those were highlights again that shifted because of the PDF versus whatever. Let me let me look on here and then I'll tell me better. Yeah, nope, I don't have okay, I'm done. That's it. Got enough? Good lord. Was that easier than, than trying to do this and say, go over here, go over there? That's good. No, I, yeah, we got it. Yep. I think okay. Yeah, I'm good. I've got some things. Uh, and I'm not going to go off of what she was reading. I'm going to go on this uh, rules and procedures, Article One. It's just about yep the draft. A draft, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go down to uh, powers of the board shall have. Um, it seems to me, unless I missed it, and I might have, what is how do we de determine if there's an executive session or a closed session? And I'm specifically talking about 
disciplinary hearings. So uh, do we have a section or should we add something that the employee would ask for a closed session? So in other words, somebody has it'd been fired. To, it would have to go in a closed session. We, we wouldn't discuss a well, personnel matter. Well, not necessarily, matter. not necessarily. The employee could come in and say, I want it open. You know, I want it open to, you know, I have nothing to say and I would prefer to have an open session. Is that doable? Um, I, we're just discussing uh, amongst ourselves because I'm not exactly sure how it works now, um, to be honest with you, well, how that process. I think if, we've had if, one or two open and most of them have been closed. OK, mm -hmm. but but again, I mean, can, can the employee say, well, look, you know, I've got my relatives here. I got my friends. I want the people here to hear what my position is. Because so they so, you know, and I would think we would leave it open if they made that choice. I think where what what sentence are you talking about? Then? Uh, I'm really okay. not talking about anything in writing. I'm talking about something that maybe that may should be in writing. Well, this language is taken directly out of the charter. So if we're going to well, but still, we're talking about procedures within this particular board of committee. Right. Uh, Which, I mean, yeah, I suppose we could add a thing that says. I'm, I'm just saying if, if, if we have a hearing about a discharge, an employee requests the meeting to be open. Can that happen? I would. Because it I has happened once or twice. Yes, it has. It, it has. has. We remember. Where it's one. been public. Which one? Like Which open? Ones? Yeah, but it's been so long ago. Yeah. Well, we had we had the one, one under Dela that was fired for sexual harassment or something, and he he or she appealed it. I can't remember who it was. That was a closed mm -hmm. session. Right. Um, we had another disciplinary that was going to be closed session, but then the person didn't show up, so then that all got canceled. Mm -hmm. um, but. I, maybe you're thinking of when we had the paramedics that were in the car wreck and mm. were exposed to the HIV. Mm. That wasn't a disciplinary hearing, though. Perhaps this is something we need to do some research on uh, and get some clear lines of distinction on what's what, and including if the employee requests it, do we even allow that? I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. I personally I don't, don't like know. it. I personally think I mean, we're going to discuss we, individual people. Yeah, so I, I just we, we need to do some. These are good questions um, that we need to vet out a little bit. And then, um, having a having a documented process is, is, is important. So um, we'll we'll look into that over the next um, month or the next meeting. Well, I have never in almost 40 years I've even seen something like that. I don't think we've had an appeal, appeal in about three of a, years. Like a, That's important. <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. You just haven't had, yeah. Well, because I come from private sector, so right. I've right. never, I mean, that was um, something I'd never seen before yeah. well, and in my right. career. Or None of us have experienced that yet. Yeah, yeah. Right. and it's <laughs> in our the, the, very rare. Yeah. The, the second thing is they talk about the powers of the board. Uh, such powers uh, and findings will be final. Well, I noticed that maybe one or two departments, we've not had people appeal to the personnel board. Right. I think they have used some other mechanism. And I'm thinking about police, and I've been police. on it about 14 years, not as long as a couple of you. Uh, are there certain departments or functions that maybe go to Arbitra okay. not binding arbitration. Their contracts, their contracts. Oh, okay. Um, outline that, and so right. we have actually done arbitration. I've done that. Oh, okay. In a in a union contract since I've been here, it, but is, that's that's a binding arbitration. Yes. So in a case like that, if they go to binding arbitration, do they forego the opportunity to take a second bite of the apple by coming to the board? Yes. yes. They did. That's somewhere that is. Okay. In, I, mean, I think that's in, specified in each in each agreement. In, in agreement. Is that only the police department, for example? Correct. Okay, that's what I thought, but nobody's ever explained that to me. I remember that being discussed years ago. Oh, okay, it was before so, me, yeah. I guess. And is that in Article One? Oh. 
Okay, I've got one more but, thing. Yeah. Uh, it's on page two, it's item B at the top of the page. Here, any officer, employee, or member of a board or commission of the city in an unclassified service capacity. Okay. And I'm, 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 I just don't know what that means. Can a, and again, can, th this is in the charter. Yeah, okay. I copied this directly from oh, the charter. Okay, yeah. So, so I, I just, you can't change this. Yeah. <laughs> so, so can if if a city planning commission member is ousted by the city council, can they appeal that to this board? Uh, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't know what that means. I mean, well, it it re it references after his or her discharge from employment. So, and, and it has to be in an unclassified service category. And, and, so, and what does that mean? I mean um, it's outlined in the charter. <laughs> what an out, what an unclassified employee is. It's okay, but quite a, why say a member of a border commission. Okay, could it be the PAUB? Could it be uh, uh, the uh, board of adjustment or planning commission? Well, what, I don't think it applies because, because I don't think that applies because, like, just say it said hear any member of the PUAB after his or her discharge from employment. They're not employed. I mean, is employment, so that then what, what is the definition of employment? Is it the, uh, getting a paycheck? Yeah. Or is it being we appointed? Are not, we are not, a, a, we're not employed. But, but can legal folks make that determination that maybe that's not the case, attorney? I, perhaps, I don't know. Yeah, uh, so yeah. I, I don't know. I'm I just be, asking. That. I don't have I, I any too, paid. Because I, yeah, we I, don't have any paid boards or commissions. In fact, I think in the charter it states that they can't be. But but, but I'm just asking why that's there. Yeah. If it doesn't well, make any sense. Well, and, and if it and I would agree that it doesn't make any sense, but it's in the charter, so we would have to speak to that mm -hmm. as a charter change. And maybe in 19. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. Was. Henry, do you, do you <laughs> I don't know. You're an expert in this charter. Mm -hmm. uh, what what does that mean? You you know? It didn't, looks like this language is stricken on my copy that you're discussing. You're they're looking. Flying, they're flying through it. That that's. So you're those removing her, that. Th no, those those were uh, Laura's recommended changes. So so I said to strike this. Be mm -hmm. I just say the powers and duties of the board shall be in accordance with section 3.929 of the charter. And Here. that mirrors the exact language yes. in here. Yes, which is why I'm like, don't don't re put all that language in here. Just well, reference the charter. You, you got a point that I don't understand where, where it says any any officer commission. When well, I thought that this was for the classified service, the classified service had a right to bring uh, a, an appeal to the board. Yeah. They do. It's in the charter. I, d I don't know. I didn't write the charter. But yeah, because it says any employee yeah. after his discharge can yeah. come to us. Yeah. So I mean, right. I, I'm in classified service. There's only right. a handful of of, of uh, positions in the city that are considered unclassified. Right. Which would um, be like the city attorney, the city manager, assistant city manager. No, those no, are excluded I, I'm from I'm this. In class, I'm in a classified position. The city manager. Um, the management analyst, I believe, is unclassified. It's in our pay plan. I just can't remember off the yeah. top of my head. Well, if City you read Clark, it here, maybe. Um, but if you read it here, it says those people, like except yeah. for like except for those people, those yeah. are exempted. So right, yeah. the judges can't come the to board us. Board the board council board. members, and it probably should okay, say yeah. the budget board analyst. Board. Maybe yeah. when we review the yeah. charter, yeah. that is a note we should yeah. make. The key word there might be employment, uh, where you're, you're not. The attorney will be able to weigh in if that would be the key, <laughs> the key determinant. If you're if you have an employment, then you you meet at least this. But I don't see how the removal of a politically appointed board member would yeah. have standing before you guys. I just it, I, I, I don't even know this language. Looks right, like. but, but, but it, it says but it, it, it though. Well, yeah. you know. No, it doesn't because it we're not if, if we if we get kicked off by a council member. <laughs> We are not employed by the city. Uh -huh. So then that doesn't apply. Mm -hmm. Laura, the member of the board of the personnel board, after her discharge from employment, well, I haven't been discharged from employment. 
I've been discharged by the city council, which is who we serve. So, so we'd have to define what employment is, maybe. Well, employment well, is the, po the power, the prestige versus a paycheck, maybe. I don't know. So, no, this is not. How about we? How about we chew on this um, over the next thirty days, and okay. we'll have we'll have a better. It's a good question. So uh, let's we'll we work on this a little bit, and then put it on the charter committee list too. <laughs> it could be that. Yeah, absolutely. You know. That's that's one to put on the burner for the charter committee. Yeah. So in, in right, and yeah. in the meantime, you just say yeah. we reference the charter, then let mm -hmm. them do it. Yeah. So I don't think they're going to allow us to start bringing a charter change for that. I think it's good to keep it on the yeah, yeah. their radar. Yeah. On the put, list. It on, put a yeah. pin in it and hold it for later. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Okay. Madam Chairman, the board has members have all spoken and spoke it. Uh, that was the idea to let the board discuss and then possibly entertain a statement from the public. If it's all right, I'd like to speak now. You have five minutes. So that, that'll be the restriction in formative discussions as well as formal. Uh, number eight on page five, four. And does it look like that's been should, uh, recommended to be removed? Okay, so you're looking at mine? Yes. Okay, pay, I'm sorry. Special what? transaction for that. Oh, that transactional thing, yeah. Uh, so. Item eight, five, yes. four. Yeah. You're, that's, uh, yeah. That, Rich, the idea is you to remove that. Yes. Okay. And uh, seven four seven. Uh, item two D. It looks like that's going to be uh, just a, a thing that says executive session. So that was lost personal policy versus personnel record or personnel issue. I think that answers itself. It, a policy would not be subject to an executive session, an issue of an individual over discipline. Am I about tracking right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're not going to go into executive then, session. Uh, employees, uh, representatives, uh, number three, page seven, four, others with knowledge. With knowledge, mm -hmm. is that a prerequisite or is it who want others who want to speak? And I'm thinking I've appreciated and thought of it's been a, of assistance in the formula meetings to not be bound by a five minute standard. I would understand that at a post to 10 day notice. And then you have people make the comments on the changes before you, but I guess if the board will allow more than five minutes, I guess that's, that's the only authority I, if I wanted to say more, you guys felt you wanted to hear more. So I think like, sometimes I may have more than five, may have more than five minutes to this. I understand restricting that in a formal hearing, but in in, in informal hearings at, in these forms, that ask for some consideration to have, to complete my thoughts at least, but not take two hours. I'm not, I know that. I mean, to be to be succinct in my thoughts. So that was can, my two questions. Can I represent to talk? And formal versus informal. Uh, if I could, the second question about time yeah. bound. Um, I mean, city council meetings, they have a time restriction. And then what they do is if someone asks for more time, you can always suspend your rules and allow for more time. Uh, so I think having a, you know, having a standard and then, you know, Butch can always ask for more time if he wants and you all can grant that to him or not. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, but with knowledge, it's not a prerequisite that you have to have knowledge. The public can, I mean, like if you have an others with knowledge on the topic, just thinking there may be somebody that doesn't have knowledge that wants to make a presentation. All the more reason to keep it to five minutes. He said all the more reason to keep it to five minutes because they don't know what they're talking about on the topic. Do they get up to bat if they don't have knowledge? They have to have knowledge to get up to bat. So I'm, yeah. yeah. That, that's, to me, to it's bat, all but it may not be to you guys. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 That words and members of the public may address versus with knowledge. And that would um, really be at a formal a hearing where you posted for formally. 
you seem like anybody could talk, they wouldn't necessarily have to have knowledge. They wouldn't have to have a credential. Well, well I know something about this. I may well, just be opposed to it and not know what I'm being opposed to. Well, and this is the order of business for a regular meeting, mm -hmm. as opposed to the order of business that I put in there for public hearing. Right. And when you open a public hearing, I mean, I think people should keep it reasonable, but anybody can speak. Okay. I mean, if they got up there and, and say, I disagree with this, I don't think it should go into effect. Like you said, they may not understand how we got here, what the word changes or anything, but they can get up say that in a public hearing. At yeah. the formal yeah. meeting, they don't have to have some some not pre knowledge yeah. or with yeah. knowledge. But in this formally, if you want somebody that has some some experience with it, I understood. Yeah. And then whether or not you can give them more than five minutes would be a pump to how well they're doing or whether you want to hear them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, folks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all I got. Okay, so anybody, anything else on the um, uh, rules and rule of people take comments from everybody? Are we good with all that? Okay. So would we, will we, we need to make all the changes and then send it in, in the next agenda. Is that do you have to make a motion to do that or do we want? Because yeah. I uh, we could do it that way. Um, I I make a motion that the city staff make the requested changes to the draft whatever and present it to us at the next meeting. That's the second the motion. Okay. Hey, I I. Okay. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Second. Sure. All in favor, say bye. <laughs> bye, -bye. <laughs> That's what I do on my meetings. <laughs> you do. Take care. That's great. I've got to head out. Bye or bye, whatever. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you.